What's up, everybody? Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh, and I'm here helping you make smarter investments for late game gains. And as always, keep in mind that anything you see in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. I am just a debater here bringing you the best arguments for crypto to better inform your own independent decisions. In today's MELD white paper breakdown, we're answering the question of how does MELD logistically intend on making their products and ecosystem functional? This question is pretty thoroughly answered by pages 25 through 36 of the white paper. And I also think this highlights what makes MELD very different, what, what makes MELD special among the competition in the crypto space. But before I dive into the white paper breakdown, I think this week's video is a perfect opportunity to bring up some news that came up last week regarding MELD and Cardano. Last week, MELD announced that they're going to be launching the first ever gold-backed stablecoin on the Cardano network. This is a huge deal for a couple of reasons. One, it enables people to invest in gold on the blockchain. And two, there's not a lot of trust in stablecoins nowadays, and I think this helps to restore a lot of that. The past I want to say one to two years has brought up a, a lot of questioning of the reliability of stablecoins in the crypto space right now, which is concerning. Take Tether, for example, represented by the ticker USDT. Lately, it's come into question that Tether's holdings as a company is not very reliable, and rumor has it that they only have something like 3% US dollars to actually back the value of their stablecoins. And, and that's a problem. Compare that to something like Gemini, who claims to have one-to-one -one backing of the US dollar to Gemini tokens. But on Gemini, you can't buy Cardano, so there's that. This is concerning to a lot of crypto enthusiasts because one, your casual crypto investors is not really going to know what they're getting into when they purchase or use USDT stablecoins uh, on the market. But the people that are crypto investors and very philosophically ingrained into what cryptocurrency stands for knows that in the case of some kind of catastrophic or black swan event, USDT, if it's not properly backed by value, could very well see a devaluation of their value under the US dollar value. I mean, it's been seen quite a few times throughout history where faith in an entity or government has failed people when they have distributed a, a voucher or, or a ticket or a bond or, or something like that that was supposed to be valued at a certain rate was then devalued when it came time to sell those things back to the entity that they were bought from. The point that I'm getting at here is that a gold-backed stablecoin is much more consistent with the philosophy of cryptocurrency, both in the value for scarcity and in the value for decentralization. Gold tends to go up in times of uncertainty, which makes MELD a heck of a lot more competitive in the crypto space when it comes to providing value and transparency and things that people can rely on. So on that topic of competition, MELD actually starts off this section of the white paper comparing themselves with the direct competition that they face in the crypto space. We've already been over some of the bigger differences between MELD and some of the other lending platforms in the crypto space in the MELD white paper breakdown part one and two, so definitely go check those out if you have not already. But there are a couple of differences here that are a little bit newer that we have not yet gone over, which are uh, the fact that application processes are completely instant and there are no transaction fees when it comes to taking out a loan with MELD. And that's a pretty big deal to me because we have been nickeled and dimed, which turned into quartered and dollared for years by big banks and for no necessary reason, it makes them millions of dollars. This is an integrity move in my opinion. They could very easily implement even just very small fees into their platform, but this just makes things quick, easy, instant, cheap, and at no cost to you. It's just a very user-friendly approach to developing this product. On the next page of the white paper, MELD goes a little bit deeper into the direct competition in the crypto space with these other fiat lending platforms, and the differences are quite astonishing. 
Meld has more benefits for token holders, more repayment options, more lending products, and faster transaction and application speeds than any other fiat lending platform in the space. I don't think there's much more to say there. Let's just move on to the next page. In this section, Meld explains what philosophies they operate under in developing their protocol and platform. And this includes Meld emulating Cardano's peer-reviewed research-first philosophy. Meld doesn't just want to be the top lending platform in the crypto space. Meld wants to be one of the top research and developers in the world. Operating under this philosophy, Meld is putting a lot of resources into ensuring the usability of their products. And Meld intends on accomplishing this by focusing on protocol performance and user-friendly operation so that this product is usable for any human being on the planet. But beyond protocol performance and usability, security is really where Meld starts to excel. Security is at the top of their priority list because it ensures confidence and security as they move forward with the longevity of their product. And they intend to handle billions of dollars worth of value across millions of users. And it doesn't actually say this in the white paper, but Meld has partnered with Dr. Nguyen An Quinn who is one of the world's leading cybersecurity researchers and is currently acting on MELD's advisory board and participating in both the development of MELD security and the development of Hachi. And then in terms of security on the user end, MELD is also putting resources into developing educational materials to provide to their users to make sure that they prevent scammers from scamming them out of their assets, which is very important for adoption. So after the section on security, MELD breaks down the protocol into the different smart contracts that they will be utilizing for each feature in the MELD app. This includes lending contracts, borrowing contracts, vault contracts, and staking contracts, a couple of more as well, but it pretty comprehensively does a functional overview of how MELD intends to systematically make this whole MELD ecosystem functional. MELD even draws out a functional diagram to explain how all of these different agents play a part in the MELD ecosystem. This is going to be up here, and I'll keep it up here for a second so you can take a look at it. MELD continues to identify each of the agents that are identified in this ecosystem. And I think right here in the white paper, this next part, is where things start to get really interesting. When MELD starts talking about MELD vaults, which is MELD's publicly available liquidity pools, they start to talk about a concept of prevention for impermanent loss. This here is kind of a more complicated area of the DeFi space, but if you're pretty experienced in decentralized finance platforms, you know how annoying impermanent loss can be, to say the least. I will be going over on a separate video how MELD intends to solve impermanent loss, what it is. It's just kind of a more complicated topic than I want to get into in this video, but MELD does very big things here. MELD has invented a way to prevent this from happening by using the MELD token staking mechanism protocol to act as a insurance to prevent impermanent loss. Again, I will be doing a more comprehensive video on this topic later on down the road because this is extremely innovative and very powerful for users. Taking it yet another step forward, MELD outlines how they intend to provide more tools, more value, more mechanisms to be used by users in the form of oracles. Aside from a lot of the normal oracle functions in the DeFi space, like real-time data, or enabling interoperable bridges, or market analytics. MELD takes it one step further in using that data to provide risk analysis for users to take a look at and determine if it might be a good time to take out a loan. MELD will be utilizing Oracle data to produce a loan-to-value ratio 
as a tool for users to determine the risk analysis of taking out a loan at the time that they might want to take it out. MELD also outlines some of the ways that they want to reduce the risk of loans being liquidated in the future. And this mainly comes in the form of a three-day grace period provided to users that can add more collateral to their loan position in the case of a margin call. What's really nice about this is MELD is actively putting resources into developing tools for users to utilize that are providing a informative and easy experience when managing your crypto assets on MELD. This last section of the white paper kind of just breaks down some of the different specific features of the MELD app, everything from wallet creation all the way down to notifications in the case of changes to your loan position. I'll leave that part up to you if you want to go and read more about that, but that basically wraps it up for this section of the white paper. If you enjoyed this video, definitely smash that like button. And if you want to keep up with any of my Cardano-based content moving forward, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you are new to crypto and you want to know how you can get involved, check my links down in the description below for some cash bonuses to help get your crypto portfolio started. And as always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.